Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Week in 7 Questions, today with Siegfried Mureschan from the European Parliament. Siegfried, we're inching closer to a final deal on the EU budget and the recovery fund. When do you think will be done and how much of a roadblock is Polish and Hungarian opposition? We have promised to the people of Europe that the money will be available from the 1st of January 2021. We should keep our promise. 1.8 trillion euros, more money than the EU has ever spent. The traditional budget of the European Union, money for farmers, for researchers, for students, for building highways, for uh, refurbishing roads, plus 750 billion euros to help those affected by the corona crisis as of the 1st of January 2021. We in the European Parliament did our homework in every phase of this uh, adoption. We are ready to also go the final stretch, finalize everything before Christmas. Now, critics are saying the EU is just going into massive debt without any idea of how to get out of it in the future. Making debt is never an easy decision for a responsible politician. This is why we, as center-right politicians, the EPP, say we have to manage the money of the people with great care, number one, and number two, we have to see how we pay it back. And given that we do not want to put a burden, neither on the member states, nor do we want to reduce the EU budget in the future, because that would have meant less money for farmers, for researchers, um, for students, because we do not want any of this. The right way is own resources. The European Union should have its own sources of revenue that would give predictability to all of our expenditures in the future, and it would ensure that we can pay back the debt without burdening any of the member states or without negatively affecting other expenditures of the Union. The Parliament has been very adamant in anchoring the rule of law in the budget and fund. Are you happy with the solution? We are happy that there is a solution. In July, 27 heads of state and government have agreed to this principle, to link the EU budget with the rule of law. I believe this is correct, because the more money we spend, the better the control needs to be. The EU budget is money from the people for the people. And those who manage it need to make sure that money gets to those in need and they respect the European values, including the rule of law. And what about the Parliament's insistence on a stronger emphasis on innovation? We have all changed our behavior during the pandemic. We consume more of some goods and services and less of some other goods and services. There will be no way back to our habits before the pandemic, one-to-one, and there will be no way back to the economic structures exactly as they existed before the pandemic. This is why we want to use the budget for better protecting the environment, for supporting research, innovation, um, digitalization, because only then can we strive in a modern modern, uh, world. We should use this crisis to modernize our economies. Now, with the ongoing controversy from the Polish and Hungarian veto, do you actually think there will be a scenario in the future where funds are withheld because governments violate the rule of law? If any government of any member state of the union violates the rule of law, then funds should be withheld. This can happen to any country out of the 27, and the system that we have established is an objective one. It should not depend on political affiliation. On on an objective basis, the Commission should be able to propose withholding EU funds if any government, and I repeat, any government of any EU member states ever in the future breaches the rule of law. So do you think Poland and Hungary will ultimately back down and accept the rule of law conditionality? Blocking 1.8 trillion euros of EU funds is not in the interest of people in any of the member states of the Union. Uh, The European Union is offering help. It is offering lots of money, more than ever for the people of Hungary and Poland, in form of the traditional budget and in form of help after Corona. Um, The governments of these two countries would be ill-advised to reject those amounts of money. I am sure they do not want to reject them in the end. They just want to weaken the conditions and the rules 
we cannot weaken the rules so i believe they will in the end accept the money on the european rules on the european terms there is no other way this year 2020 has also brought us some good news recently including the victory of pro-european maya sandu in moldova is the wind changing in the european neighborhood what we have seen in the republic of moldova is big it is big not only for the republic of moldova but it is important for the european union as a whole a pro-european candidate a reformist a member of the center right a candidate defending european values and rule of law has won the presidential election against the incumbent pro-russian president pro-kremlin president it is exactly the type of development that we would have wished to see in belarus um, we have a duty now to respond uh, to the uh, vote of the people, the overwhelmingly pro-European vote, with offering, um, on the basis of rules, all of our support to the newly elected president and to support her reform agenda, to show that if people vote pro-European, the European Union is also ready and capable to deliver and to fulfill the expectations of the people. Thank you, Siegfried. Mulzumesk. And thank you all for watching. See you next week with another edition and another surprise guest.